Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making a small depth stop. This is a fun one that I've had for a long time, but sometimes it's just a little too small. So today we're gonna make this one. Now this is really over complicated, but we're gonna have a little bit of fun nonetheless. So let's dive in. So this is a remake of a depth stop in miniature. Uh, this is one that was given as a favor at the Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors uh, meeting almost three years ago now. Uh, and it's been a fun one. I, I use this quite a bit, but I'd like one that's a little bit bigger than this. Uh, it's a tool that I use more and more the more I play with it. So we're going to, rather than make it out of this, we're going to make it out of this. Make it a little bigger. Let's have some fun. So to make this, we need to make a pattern. And originally I was gonna do something exactly like what I had, but I thought, no, I'm gonna do something a little different. And I tried to make a pattern. And uh, once I unfolded, I realized the shape was a little too familiar and uh, we didn't wanna do that one. So I decided to make something a little bit different. Uh, in this case, I, I just, put some rounds on there and uh, use some circles and drew something that fit about right and looked like, uh, yeah, that looks about right. Still gives me enough beefy material so I can put a screw into it and it works out pretty well. I'm gonna do the body of this out of Purple Heart. At one point I was thinking I would actually do a lost PLA casting um, and, and do this out of brass to match the other one, but I thought, no, let's actually experiment first with some Purple Heart. So I might be doing one in the future out of um, out of some brass, but for right now, Purple Heart will work very well and it's a, it's a very fun wood to work with. Uh, it has a reversing grain, so you have to be very careful when planing the face. Uh, but yeah, um, it's, it's a fun one all, uh, all together. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a glue stick and attach the pattern on there and then cut out around this. The glue stick is one of my favorite ways of putting a pattern on because it, you can scrape it off and clean it off relatively easily, but it will not come off um, accidentally. It's a very solid connection. So I have several locations that I'm going to be drilling circular holes so that I get the rough shape. So I have the, the converse to the pattern to know exactly where to put the auger point to get them to come through. So we're actually gonna clamp this in the vise. You can see how it's starting to split here. Uh, and that is okay in this case because I'm gonna be removing that. Um, but if it's starting to split like that, you actually just need to clamp it a little bit harder and squeeze it together in the vise. So drill from one side uh, until the point just works out and then come from the other side and you'll get two really nice clean corners. For a lot of this, then we can come in with the saw and remove the excess making straight cuts down to the circle following the pattern. Uh, but for some of this, it's a little bit more difficult and we'll need to, uh, to clean that out. Uh, but for most of it, it's just the saw and we can get it right down to the shape, uh, except for that top rounded section, in which case that we can just file back on. So once we have all of this cut out, we can start doing some of the, the detail work and getting it right down to the shape, um, particularly on that top. Uh, it isn't too much. You could file it, file it back. You could chisel it off. Um, but in this case, I just decided to go at it with a rasp and clean it down. We want to give clean transitions from those straight spots to the rounded spots. Uh, so for a lot of that, it is going to be using rasp and file. Uh, originally on these rounded sections, I was going to drill them out and I had the point on the pattern to do that. But then I thought, no, let's actually just hit them with a the rasp. And it just took a few passes to get them down to the right shape. And that actually came out really well. So now, before we go any farther, we need to drill the hole all the way through this, accurate and clean. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use a few tricks. One of those is the ring on the drill bit. And uh, stay tuned, I might actually have something for this to make this a little easier. I use my wedding band, um, but I get a lot of questions about, ooh, should I use the wedding band or not? Um, I might have an answer for that here soon. So this allows me to know that I'm drilling a perfectly level hole. As long as the piece is level in the vise, I, it's going exactly where I need it to be. So we're gonna drill from one side, then turn around, drill from the other, and we can get to go through. The holes aren't perfectly in line, uh, but they're close enough that the rod slides through without too much problem. Now we also need to drill a hole for the set screw to go into the side. And so for this, originally I was going to tap the hole. Uh, and to do that, it's actually easier to tap with a drill than it is to do it by hand in wood because in hand, it starts to slip out. So I was trying to do it all by hand, uh, but it just wasn't quite working. Um, and yeah, this was, you can tap wood. It does work out really well. And actually, uh, there's, a, there's a few taps out there that work very well in it. And this is one of those that uh, doesn't. <laughs> and I don't actually have the, the good ones in here. And so you can see it's a little bit loose and sloppy and it just wasn't holding down as well as I wanted. So we decided to actually drill that out and I'm gonna put in uh, a threaded insert. Um, I'll try and leave links to those down below, but they're, they're pretty simple. Um, but yeah, here's my second attempt at tapping it. 
and it didn't go so well. So we're going to drill it out. Um, so it's a larger bit to fit the diameter of the insert. And the insert actually has wood threads on the outside and then machine threads on the inside. And you spin it down onto a nut and bolt and you put on a driver and put that in. Yeah, I'm using a drill here. I was under a time crunch to get this project done. So rather than hand drilling everything, I just pulled out the, uh, the cordless drill. The demon brace painted yellow. <gasps> Uh, so to get the uh, the rod through, I'm actually going to file it out. I have a little rat tail that went in there and cleaned out any burrs inside the hole, and that allowed the brass rod to slide in a little easier. You're going to do all the little detail work on it. So this I'm going to bring out a very fine file and get rid of all of the saw marks, all of the internal marks from the, the drills, and smooth it all out, make it look pretty. Uh, I wanted to spend a lot more time on this and really detail the outside, but due to the time crunch we had to uh, shoot this one, um, I ended up not going quite as far as I wanted, but I took it down to a nice shape. Uh, and for something like this, it's a functional tool. This was kind of an experiment to play with new things and try new, uh, to new techniques. Uh, I like to experiment with things that I get to use. That way I, I, I play with them more and I can see how I like things and how I don't like things. A lot of the, the problem with this is just um, making a smooth transition from the flat sections to the rounded sections. And uh, once you get that smooth transaction, it actually works pretty well. We're going to chamfer all the edges, but because it's a, uh, a rounded shape and a little bit more funky, you can't use a plane on it. So it's actually easier to come into the file and add a chamfer all the way around on all the edges. And it, I was very, very happy with how this came out, uh, especially with matching the rounded sections to the flat sections. kind of gives it an OG look. Um, to get that little bit of rounded surface on there. We're going to flip it over, take the pattern off the other side now that it's all done, and then we can chamfer that side as well. Uh, here you can see the, the pattern is coming off this a little bit harder because it's, uh, it was a really good bond. I was trying the, uh, the Gorilla Glue glue stick, and it's a little stronger than the normal um, play glue sticks I get from the, the, the kids' school. Um, but it works. Uh, I'm going to stick with the, the cheaper ones that I can get at the big box stores and uh, the Walmart. So we're going to chamfer this side, clean that all up, and then I was basically done. But I thought, you know what? Let's do a little bit of carving. Uh, and so I thought, let's do a, a marking gauge running all around and do a fine V groove. Um, I had a little bit of time left over, and so this was just like five or six minutes. So I put a marking gauge on the bottom to measure in, and then for the rest of it, I just eyeballed the edge of the V-tool, the outside edge that's sticking up, and kept that the same distance away from the outside, and eyeballed and freehanded this all the way around. And I was very happy with how this came out. I'm going to do this a little bit more. That little bit of outlining actually looks really, really good on it. So for the rod, we want to cut it down to the right length. We want to get rid of all of the burrs and any surface defects so that it would slide in and out easily. And then, of course, we're going to add boiled linseed oil to this. And oh la la, I love how it brings out that purple heart. Now, it will not stay purple like this. Um, the wood will turn brown over time. Oh well. Um, but that really brings it out in the meantime. And it looks, oh, fantastic. I love, love purple heart and BLO. I love BLO on most anything. But in this case, throw in a thumb screw, put it on down, and you've got your piece. And I'll leave a link to all the hardware down below if you want to make one for yourself. Uh, it's a little bit stiff going through that hole because the holes didn't line up quite perfectly, but it's close enough that it actually runs really well. So you'll probably be seeing this from time to time. Uh, depth gauge really comes in handy anytime you're doing a mortise or a, uh, a bottom groove, and it's used quite a bit in the shop. So there you have it, a depth stop. Uh, this is a little bit tighter than I like, but I think it'll open up over, over time. Um, I, actually, it's not that bad because once you, you set it close to where you want it, you tighten it down and that is not moving. So it's a very um, confident depth stop. Uh, it was a fun experiment. I've never played with one quite like this before, so uh, it was a, a good chance to, uh, to try something a little bit different, especially drilling a long hole all the way through accurately. Uh, it's a good skill to practice with. Uh, so now when this one is too small, I can use this one. Now this is far more fancy than it needs to be. It can just be a rod through a block and you've got a good depth stop. Um, but this is just kind of nice. It gives you something that is dedicated to it and it's a good chance to practice your skills. So get out, try it, have a little bit of fun. It's just a scrap piece that's about three quarter inch thick and you can make it whatever size shape you want. There's nothing really to it other than that.
So I hope you like this. Uh, good chance to learn and try something new. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can make. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel. People who click that join button and become members here really do help keep this going. So thank you for that. Without members and patrons, this channel wouldn't exist. So if you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over to the side, tell them thank you. They are the ones who are quite literally keeping the lights on the shop and keeping these videos coming. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The real purpose of a depth gauge is not to judge how deep your holes are, but to stop you from making jokes that are too deep. A small depth stop. This is a fun one. <coughs> <coughs> Inhale the bug.